welcome back. Good to see you. In today's video, we will talk about qualitative research process, sort of taking a holistic view and overview of how qualitative research is conducted, uh, the, looking at the whole process of qualitative research, starting from the conceptualization of a study and finishing it with uh, the publication of the study or report preparation or manuscript preparation. So we will look at, we will, we will not go into the details of those steps, but overall you will get a sense of what are different steps that are included in a, uh, in a qualitative study. So what are those different steps and how they follow each other in a sequence uh, during the whole process of a qualitative study. So let's jump in. So the first step uh, of uh, a qualitative study is the idea, the topic that you want to study. So the first step is identification of the problem or issue that you want to study. So that is the first step. So for any study, whether it's a qualitative or quantitative, you need a topic, you need some a, a problem, a research problem that you want to explore. Uh, I have seen oftentimes researchers topic came from their own personal experience. Uh, maybe it comes from uh, your own passion or something that has influenced you, something that you are passionate about. So generally research topics or the area that a researcher is interested comes from these areas or these uh, personal interest. However, uh, you can choose a topic based on, you know, it depends on what you want to explore, uh, what research question you want to answer. So the first step in any study, including qualitative studies, to identify a problem or issue that you want to answer. Now, once you know, like, okay, this is the area, this is the phenomenon, this is the problem that I want to explore. The next step is doing a literature review. What is a literature review? So basically, once you have your area of, in, uh, area of uh, interest, like, okay, I want to study how international students experience when they come to uh, uh, United States uh, for higher education. So that's your area. I want to understand how women, black women faculty members who are recently hired uh, as a faculty in, in a university or college, what is their experience of uh, being a faculty member? So that's the area that I'm interested to explore. So once I know the area, the topic, the issue that I want to explore, I need to do some literature review. And why literature review is important? Because it gives you a sense of uh, how many studies are previously done on this topic, what those studies have focused on, what were the findings of those study. So it gives you a sense of what is the situation, what is the status of the problem in terms of how much we know about this issue. So it gives you a sense of uh, how much work is already done and what previous studies which were conducted, what they have found. So literature review give you uh, uh, the status of research on that particular topic. Another thing that in literature review, and I'm talking here about qualitative literature review, uh, 
you do a brief literature review rather than a thorough complete literature review. And why we do that? In qualitative research, one of the fundamental principle that we follow is to understand, to explore a phenomenon without any personal bias or preconceived notion that as a researcher we might have. For instance, let's say if, I'm ex if I want to explore international student experiences in higher education in United States and let's say I'm also an international uh, faculty. So I have been an international student in, 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 in a US university. Now, because I have already gone through that phenomenon as a student, I might have my own preconceived notions and idea of, of what international students face, uh, kind of challenges or opportunities when they come to US as student. And when I do a thorough literature review, then I will learn more about what are some very, uh, various uh, factors which influence a student's experience. And the moment I start my data collection, when I start interviewing international student as part of this study, my previous knowledge can, can become like a barrier in the open, unbiased exploration of the phenomenon. And that is the reason many scholars suggest that as a qualitative researcher, you do literature review, but you don't do a thorough literature review. You do a sort of a literature review, brief literature review, where you want to understand the phenomenon so that you could see, uh, you can establish a rationale for your study. However, you don't want to do a thorough literature review as it might get you biased when you start exploring the phenomenon, when you start collecting the data. So what happens after you have collected the data and you start analyzing the data uh, and at that time you come back again and, and do a thorough literature review because you have already collected the data so there is no chance of uh, being biased now. So during the data analysis process, you come back and do uh, another round of literature review to understand the phenomenon in its depth. So that's the idea of a brief literature review. And literature review is also important uh, because it, it provides a solid rationale for this study based on what studies has already been done and what might be some avenues of further exploration. So the second step in a qualitative study is literature review. So you started with an idea, a problem, or issue that you want to explore. You did some literature review to understand what work has already been done on the topic. Now, based on your brief literature review, you develop your purpose statement and your research questions. So, literature review helps you develop the research questions that you want to answer based on what work has already been done. And so you develop two things, your purpose statement, which is saying that what is the core purpose of your study, what you want to focus on, and then your research questions are the questions that are going to drive your whole study. So these two things you want to establish, you want to write, you want to determine in the third step of your study. Now, you have your purpose statement, you know what issue, what uh, 
problem you want to focus on and you already have developed your research questions which are going to drive your study uh, which you want to answer through your qualitative study. The next step is deciding the methodology. What methodology I'm going to use uh, to answer this question? And methodology meaning research methodology. So the first thing you want to determine is research design What research design is suitable to answer the research question? Whether a phenomenological research design is suitable to answer the question? Whether a grounded theory research design is suitable to answer the question? Whether a case study research design is suitable to answer the question? Whether a narrative inquiry research design is suitable to answer the question? whether an ethnography research design is uh, suitable to answer the question. So you determine your research design that you are going to use uh, in this study. After you determine the research design, you also want to determine the sampling strategy. What is sampling? As you already know, Sampling strategy refers to your strategy for uh, who you want to interview, from whom you want to collect the data. So what are the sources of your data uh, collection? And what is strategy you are going to adopt to, to collect the data? So your sampling strategy is uh, what will be your strategy in data collection? So let's say, uh, there are many examples, so let's take uh, one, maybe you want to do purposive sampling strategy, maybe you want to do convenience sampling, uh, maybe you want to do chain uh, strategy or snowball sampling. So depending on your research questions, depending on the logistics, depending on your resources, you decide which sampling strategy is going to be effective in your uh, recruitment process. You also want to define, clearly define, recruitment process. Recruitment process meaning that how will you reach out to the participants? Are you going to publish an advertisement in the newspaper? Are you going to uh, maybe publish uh, your uh, advertisement in social media or you are going to not do anything, maybe put some flyers on campus or marketplace? So what is strategy you are going to use for your recruitment? So you want to define that too as part of your uh, research design. And finally, a very important point that you want to deliberate and define here is ethics. Ethics meaning that how will you ensure the safety and confidentiality of your research participant. Remember, for all kind of research, whether it's a scientific investigation or social science investigation, you are doing research in any field, the first thing you need to always ensure is the safety and confidentiality of your research participants. And in United States, uh, every university, every research organization has uh, a department or a committee, we call it IRB, Institutional Review Board. The work of an Institutional Review Board is to assess that the researcher or the plan you have devised for your data collection is safe, there is no harm there for your participants, uh, and the data is confidential and is protected rightly. So for any research you are doing in US, you need to first get approval from the IRB board before you proceed for data collection. 
Uh, in other countries, I have seen there is ethics committee, uh, maybe a different name, but every uh, country, uh, wherever you know a research is being conducted, they have to follow through these ethical processes, ethical research practices, and they have to clearly uh, define and 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 state out how they are going to uh, ensure safety and confidentiality of their participants. So, in methodology, this next uh, stage, which I said, is super important. And we call this the, the four steps. Step number one, step number two, step number three, and step number four. We call it like a planning phase. So this is the planning phase of your study where you think through the problem that you want to study, you do a brief literature review, you, you provide a, a solid rationale for your study, you come up with your research question, your purpose statement, and then the most important thing is to think through your methodology, the research design you are going to use, the sampling strategy, the recruitment strategy, and ethics related to the study that you are doing. So this phase is called planning phase. Now the fourth phase is data collection phase. In this phase, as a researcher, now you got approval from the IRB board. Now you can go ahead and collect data. Now, as you know, in data collection, you can collect data in qualitative studies through interviews. There are two kinds of interviews, individual. So you can do individual interviews or group interviews, which we all also call it focus group interviews. You can also collect data through participant observation. What is participant observation? You simply go observe your research participant in their natural setting and you write notes and your observation. You can also do document analysis. So you can collect some document related to the uh, problem or issue that you are investigating and you can do analysis around those. You can also do artifacts. So you can collect some artifacts, maybe created by your research participants. So these are various tools or ways that you use uh, in this phase, which is data collection phase of your study. Now you collected the data, a brief phase, we call it data cleaning and organization. So once you collect the data, you don't, you know, like let's say if I conduct an interview, I don't automatically start analyzing the interviews. I first need to make sure that the, the data has been cleaned, cleaned in the sense that you clean for any uh, impurities in the data and you organize it before you start, uh, sorry, data analysis. So let's say if I do an interview with uh, a person, so before I start data analysis, I need to first clean the data, which means that I can transcribe the interview and then I can print it. And then I will read through those transcriptions, uh, those interview transcript, and see if there is any error. And if there is an error, I will correct and fix those. And then I will, uh, organization is also means that I de-identify the uh, transcript. De-identify is like I change the identifying details of the participants so that it, uh, we can maintain the confidentiality of the participants. So this is called data cleaning and data organization. 
Now the next step after you clean the data, you organize the data is data analysis. Data analysis phase. Now in, in data analysis, you start with whatever approach you have for your data analysis. Maybe let's say I'm doing a thematic analysis or I'm doing some um, uh, grounded theory approach of doing maybe axial coding or some other kind of coding. So based on your research design that you have already uh, decided, you do your data analysis. A very important thing to keep in mind is, unlike the quantitative research where data analysis happen after data collection, so you collect the data and after you have completed collecting your data, you start the process of data analysis. So this is what happens in quantitative study. However, in qualitative studies, data analysis and data collection are, they go at the same time, meaning they go together. So let's understand it, how, how it looks like. So let's say uh, I'm collecting data and I'm interviewing international students in, in higher education in the US. So let's say I collected, uh, I, I conducted the first interview and then second interview, let's say. What I would do, I will not wait until all the interviews are done. What I will do after conducting two interviews, I can transcribe the interview, clean the data, and I can do the coding, data analysis, and then I go back again and do another interview based on what results, what tentative results are showing up here, I can maybe tweak my research question, uh, tweak my not research question, the interview questions, and then collect further data. So it's a very cyclical process here happening. So data analysis and data collection are cyclical here where you do some data collection, you do some uh, uh, analysis and based on the analysis you do further data collection, you do further analysis and this cycle keep going together. And this process is different than what we see in quantitative studies. In quantitative studies you completely finish the data collection process and then you do the data analysis. Here this process of data collection and data analysis is going together. So once you have completely finished your data collection and your data analysis process, the next step is your findings. So based on your data analysis, you come up with the findings. And now based on whatever findings came uh, emerged out of your data, you write your research report or manuscript that you submit for publication in a research journal. So let's, so that's briefly about the overview of uh, a qualitative research project. Let's start it again. So the first step is you, you identify a problem, a phenomenon, an issue that you want to explore. You do a brief literature review and based on your literature review, you, decide, you determine, you find out, okay, what is the work which has already been done and what needed to be done. So you kind of find a rationale for your study and you develop your research question and your purpose statement. Based on your research questions, you determine your research design, your sampling strategy, your recruitment process. You also think about how to, uh, the ethical questions related to your study, and then you file for IRB. Once these steps are completed, then you start the process of data collection. 
after you collect the data you do data cleaning and then you do the analysis and as I said previously in qualitative study data clean uh, data analysis and data collection they go in a cyclical way they go together and once you have finished your data collection as well as data analysis you based on your analysis you come up with your findings your research findings and then based on your research findings you write your research report that you you may have to submit maybe to certain organizations and then you also prepare a manuscript for a journal publication i hope this explanation have given you um, the overview of a qualitative research thank you very much and have a good rest of the day